Today we're going to be talking about some of the significant price discrepancies between different trading pairs on GDAX, as well as some of my thoughts on high correlations between different assets in the space uh, that are really magnifying risk in the cryptocurrency market right now. So this is uh, some Python code that I wrote after hooking into GDAX's API. Um, it uh, took a lot of work to get it set up, but it's pretty simple once you understand what you're doing. So the first thing that I noticed was that there was uh, there was pretty big differences between the uh, Litecoin USD and Bitcoin USD values versus the direct Litecoin Bitcoin trading pair uh, itself. So um, what I did was I've been uh, this this uh, prints out every time there's a trade. And this prints out the calculated Litecoin or the calculated Ethereum value. And then this is the actual Ethereum or actual Litecoin value. So this is the direct Ethereum Bitcoin pair or the Litecoin Bitcoin pair. And this is if you took the two uh, USD values and put them over one another. So Litecoin USD divided by Bitcoin USD. Uh, and then this is the price differential that results. Um, as you can see, it's, it's normally pretty close to 0.3. Um, I've seen it go as high as 0.7 for a short period of time, but um, this is 0.3% of potential profit if you do um, a, a pretty simple form of arbitrage on just one exchange. So I'm going to give you a little example here that kind of uh, magnifies what I'm talking about. Uh, this is kind of an extreme example. It normally doesn't get to 10%, but this is a good example that's just simple to understand. So Bitcoin is trading at 10,000. Litecoin is trading at 200. So that means that the trading pair itself should be 0 0.02 because 200 divided by 10,000 is 0 0.02. But it's actually trading at 0 0.021 because these two things trade separately. Uh, people are free to trade in between them. Uh, they're not directly related in any way. So the way you go about exploiting this is you would buy Litecoin and then trade it directly to, to Bitcoin. And, as you, and then uh, then if you wanted to sell that Bitcoin directly, you would then have made $500. And this 10% this, this, uh, profit here, 10,000 to 10,500, is because of this Litecoin Bitcoin uh, price discrepancy. So like I just mentioned over here, it's normally like 0.3 or 0.4%. So obviously pretty small. Um, but if you have a bot doing this for you automatically, uh, you could it, it could it could end up being something substantial if there's a lot of opportunities. Um, I'm still looking at if I want to use limit orders versus uh, market orders, just because you know limit orders are free on GDAX, so uh, that's something that I'm going to be taking into consideration. And also, uh, you you could obviously go the opposite way as well uh, and make a profit if this Litecoin Bitcoin pair was below 0 0.02. Um, so one thing that I'm trying to do is I want to find out what's the leading and what's the lagging indicator. So are the USD values following the Litecoin Bitcoin pair or is it the, the opposite? And I haven't back tested this uh, pretty like r really at all, but my theory is that volume is the primary driver and I want to give you an example why. So um, this is the volume for all the GDAX pairs. So as you can see, Bitcoin USD uh, Ethereum USD are the big ones, hundreds of millions. And as you can see, um, Litecoin, Litecoin Bitcoin down here is pretty small. It's only five, five million worth versus Litecoin USD and Bitcoin USD. Um, same with Ethereum Bitcoin. It's still relatively small, 28 million versus the 160 million and 223 million. So basically what that means is I think the, uh, the, the, the ETH USD, I mean the ETH BTC and the LTC BTC pairs are constantly playing catch up to get to be valued at what they truly should be valued at. And this is why the market is exposing some of these inefficiencies. Um, some of the traders right now are just not keeping up and making it as efficient as it should be. Also, uh, I think this is even more highlighted for GDAX because whenever people new to crypto buy, they normally just buy directly on Coinbase, and that only feeds volume into these three into these three trading pairs, and that then promotes distortion among the uh, the uh, trading pairs tied to Bitcoin. 
So this is a pretty interesting thing I, I observed. Um, I don't know if the opportunity is going to be big enough to exploit successfully, but I will keep you updated uh, when I have that bot actually up and running. I'm a little bit more confident in it now, now that I've actually learned how to hook into the API and kind of mess around a little bit. So on to our second topic. Uh, I'm sure this is a chart that you've seen uh, many different times. It's the correlations between crypto assets uh, using the uh, daily period. Um, so as you know, they're all pretty highly, highly correlated, um, but most of them are around 0.5 over the last year. Um, but this is only on the daily. So what this is saying is that, you know, they're not going to move together on a daily basis. So if we zoom out a little bit and look at a monthly time frame, a lot of these assets are highly, highly correlated. ETH and Bitcoin, highly correlated on the monthly. Ethereum, Litecoin, highly correlated on the monthly. And basically what, what I just want to highlight here is that if you think you have a diversified portfolio in crypto and that's going to somehow hedge you to the downside, I really think that you're mistaken and that uh, you should know that basically all of these things are functioning as one asset right now, uh, except for, for a few cases. So I just want to highlight a few. Um, a lot of people I know hold both Bitcoin and Litecoin and they think that kind of is like a hedge and somehow lowers their risk. but. During their uh, three-year time of trading together, they have been highly, highly correlated, almost 100% correlated uh, for their entire three-year history. So you've been basically holding the same asset throughout this period, as, 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 as crazy as that sounds. So I think it would be better to hedge into maybe a different use case. Both of these are functioning as currencies. Um, so either maybe go into a privacy coin or to something like Ethereum that is a, uh, that's like a whole platform where you can do smart contracts on. I think, I think there can be some diversification from being in different sectors, but it's not as great as we'd want. So another example I was going to do is Bitcoin and Zcash. This is one of the few negative correlations that, that I've seen, um, which is pretty interesting. Uh, in, in, in traditional markets, when you have a portfolio, it's good to have stuff that is negatively correlated. Um, a common example is like owning oil stocks and owning airline stocks. So that way, if the price of oil goes up, it's good for your oil companies, bad for your airline companies, and it reduces the volatility of your portfolio. And I'm going to be looking into more ways to reduce volatility of cryptocurrency portfolios, if it's even possible at all. Um, but I think it's something that, that needs to be done, and it's good to have some negative correlations in your portfolio. And I think the easiest way to do that right now is to have some assets from uh, different sectors that are trying to do different things. Basically, cryptos with different use cases. So another good example of that would be Ethereum Zcash. So for a pretty short period of time, they were positively correlated, but they've mostly been around zero. Obviously, zero correlation isn't great, but it's definitely better than having all your assets being 100% correlation. This at least gives you somewhat of a reduction in volatility, hopefully. So the one last thing I want to go over is this kind of interesting chart that I found. So this is the Bitcoin versus altcoin performance uh, following the massive 2013 bear market. And um, as you can see, Bitcoin outperformed big time, uh, actually 4x than if you'd held a basket, a uh, index of the top 10 altcoins. Um, and I think this is because uh, whenever you know times are good, when it's a bull market, people tend to allocate capital into risky and riskier names, smaller cap stocks, uh, and it's easier to get bigger gains out of those when times are good. People are taking more risk, so they're going up more. But um, if we do see a significant pullback, I'm, I'm still inclined to believe that the same thing will happen. Obviously, altcoins now uh, have a much bigger following, have a real purpose as compared to 2013. But they've still gotten ahead of themselves pretty big time. Uh, if you look over the past year, Bitcoin is still up around 1,000%. And, uh, and, and all altcoins together are up, I think it's 3,500%. So three and a half times as much as Bitcoin. Maybe they deserve it because they're working on some really, uh, really powerful stuff. But I tend to think if uh, we have a huge downturn, they're still going to get affected a lot worse. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, please, please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe to my channel. One thing I'm really going to try to do here is not uh, waste your time. I feel like a lot of YouTubers in general, especially crypto YouTubers, waste your time just talking about news events that you've already read about three times. 
So I'm really going to try to only bring you objective, actionable information uh, that's mathematical and that you can hopefully uh, learn something from or just use to better your portfolio's performance in crypto or just in finance in general. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something.